Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel, Must Love Labs. My name is Alan. On this channel we talk about tips and tools for how to raise, breed, and sell Labrador Retrievers as quality family pets. So if you're new here, you might consider subscribing. In today's video we're going to be doing some dog breeder Q&A. You folks have been writing in on the channel and asking some questions. I got a few of them printed out here, so we're going to answer them. Let's get to the content. All right, I got a list of questions printed out here, and uh, we're going to take a look at them here. Um, Ali Haligi writes in and says, um, great setup. I had a question. Can my pregnant dog go up and down stairs? Um, absolutely, your pregnant dog can go up and down stairs as long as she wants to. That's the thing. I wouldn't force her. Um, and I, I don't know what kind of stairs you're talking about. Is it a big flight of 15 stairs? Is it just a couple? The principle is probably the same. As long as she wants to do it, that's fine. Uh, and if she doesn't want to do it, I wouldn't make her do it. I would set her up to not have to deal with stairs if I see her experiencing discomfort uh, or, or just a strong unwillingness to do it. You know, if you've got to really got to coax her into whatever, she, she, might, uh, she might not be comfortable if she's got a a big belly full of puppies. I don't know how exactly far along in the pregnancy she is, uh, but I wouldn't make her do the stairs. If she wants to do it, that's fine. Uh, she's certainly capable of carrying her puppies around. Uh, and if she doesn't want to do it, I wouldn't make her. I'd set her up to not have to deal with stairs until after she whelps her puppies. Hope that helps. Okay, and this next question, Geraldo Pimento asks, when do you start feeding your puppies and what is the recipe? Um, we start feeding our Labrador puppies here at Must Love Labs. We start feeding them. We start helping the mama dog feed them um, right around four weeks. But here's a tip for you. We actually start feeding those puppies while the mama dog is still pregnant with them. Yeah, after she's, uh, there's a nine-week gestation period. And for about the last four to five weeks of the mama dog's pregnancy, we actually start feeding her puppy food. Okay, we use Iams Puppy Food here. I'll put a link in the description. I usually do, and you guys can check it out. Uh, I've done a lot of food research, and I think that's the best bang for your buck when you're looking for quality kibble. Um, uh, we start feeding puppy food to the mama dog while she's pregnant. Uh, and, and through her, we start feeding the puppies puppy food that way because the puppy food is specifically uh, formulated for, for what puppies need, and we can give it to them through the mama dog and then it goes into her milk. Uh, so that, that's probably a, a little more than what you thought I was going to say. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I, I think that the real answer to your question was when we start feeding the puppies after they've been born. And um, uh, that's at about four weeks. Well, most people will call that mash. Um, and we'll take some of the Iams puppy food that we use and put it in a food processor and basically turn it into a powder. We'll powder it. Uh, and then add in water. And um, uh, the, the very first time we do this, it's more of a soupy mix, almost like chocolate milk, really, uh, just to get the puppies uh, started with something other than mother's milk. And, um, and mama dog's gonna be feeding her the whole way, uh, feeding the puppies the whole way through this process, by the way. Um, so day one, we'll give them a, um, a real soupy mixture, uh, a little bit thicker than chocolate milk. Um, and day two, you thicken it up a little bit. Day three, you thicken it up a little bit more. Uh, and this is how you start getting them used to solid food. Uh, by the end of the week, we've got them eating a, 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 a moist paste, if you will. Um, um, and they're, they're getting bigger now. So now they're, they're getting up towards five weeks at this point. And um, uh, the, we're going to gradually move towards um, moistened kibble. We'll soak it. I've got a big, one of the big coffee cans. Uh, we'll, we'll soak their kibble in that for three or four hours um, before we feed the puppies, which is three times a day, by the way, um, at this point. And um, uh, so moistened kibble. Um, and mom and dog is going to be uh, having a harder and harder time keeping up with them, just feeding them milk at this point. So she's going to be looking for you to help out anyways. Uh, so by the end of week four, 
We've got them on heavily moistened kibble. Uh, and throughout week five, uh, we start soaking it for less time. Uh, by the end of week five, we're just moistening it um, uh, just to barely get it wet. And by the end of week six, they're on completely dry kibble. Uh, but it's the same Iams puppy food the whole way through. Um, three times a day, you, you'll learn about how much they're eating. Mama dog's going to be nursing them the whole way through that. And, and this is the transition from just mother's milk um, at around week four. We start them. Uh, and by the time my Labradors get to week, the end of week six, really, they're on dry kibble at that point. Uh, so you got about a two-week transition period there from a soupy mixture of powder and water to dry kibble. Uh, and you'll get a feel for how it goes. Um, and and uh, they'll, you'll, you'll find that it goes pretty well. Um, and mom and dog certainly appreciates the help. She can't keep up with them uh, beyond three or four weeks with just mother's milk. It's too much to ask. Uh, and it wouldn't be right. You've got to transition them onto kibble. Um, uh, most people would agree that that needs to happen by the end of week six. Hope that helps. Hey folks, if you're getting value from this video, do us a favor and hit that like button. It really does help out quite a bit. And if you want to support our channel, we've got a Teespring store. I'll put a link in the description. You can stop by and check out a t-shirt or a hoodie. And we also put links in the descriptions of all of our videos for pet products that we use and approve of here at Must Love Labs. And thanks in advance for checking that out. Uh, Aki writes in, um, do you think having two puppies a male and a female is good to start off. Yes, I do. I think that's a great way to start off. Um, I'm not sure what breed you're talking about, but again, I focus on Labradors, so that's what I'm going to refer to. Um, your female needs to be two years, right around two years before she can breed. Um, uh, the male needs to have at least a year under his belt, and you're not going to be able to get his OFA certifications till he's two years either. So. Uh, if you buy them at the same time, that's fine. Uh, if you're just going to buy them one at a time, I would get the female first and give her a chance to, to mature and grow up. Uh, maybe pick up the male just a little bit later. or uh, um, uh, e Either way, at the same time, it would be fine. Uh, staggering them out a year would be okay too. Um, but I think that's a great plan. Um, I do recommend that you go with AKC Registrable Purebreds. Um, and they need to be completely unrelated. Don't get them from the same litter. Um, if you get them from the same breeder, then you need some assurances that they've come from completely different parent dogs, which is hard to find at the same breeder. Uh, not impossible, for sure. Some breeders have lots of mated pairs, and they can, they can help you with that. Uh, and if not, then just get them from two different kennels. That's fine. Um, so unrelated um, purebreds that you can register with the AKC. There's other registries. I've got ACA dogs myself. Um, but, you know, when people ask what's the best way to go, and this is one of the things that I've learned, um, you'll, you'll do better with the AKC registrable dogs. Um, so that's what I would recommend. So is it a great idea? Yes, absolutely. Wonderful way to start. Great question. Uh, Polo Puppies writes in, says, uh, can you do a video on how to or what to do with the money when it comes in about banks and paying taxes, these kinds of things. Um, I don't really give financial or legal advice on this channel, uh, but I will tell you just on a personal note that um, I would recommend that you get a separate bank account and keep these things separate um, so it doesn't get intermingled with your personal expenses. Uh, you're going to end up talking to a CPA at some point, and they're going to be really glad that you did that. It just makes things so much easier to manage when it comes to the accounting. Um, uh, so I, I would get your own account just for your dogs, um, unless you've got other animals like at a farm, and maybe your CPA would tell you to handle that differently. But uh, probably I would go with you with a separate account and, uh, and work with a CPA on, on, on covering your tax bill. Uh, you, you do not want to get in trouble with the government. I can tell you that. Uh, it, much better to be on the other side of that equation. Um, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, as it says in the Bible. And uh, uh, I would recommend that you not try to dodge the tax man. Just work with a CPA and get it done and move on. That's my advice. 
Uh, Vado Loco writes in, says, Hi, sir. I'm wondering if there's a good company to do DNA testing for the dog. Um, I hear good things about different companies. Uh, this person lives in Canada. Um, that's an excellent question. We were talking about DNA testing in a previous video, and um, specifically uh, not just for disease checks, but also for coat color genetics, you know. It's a, um, it's a, it's that that's an coat color genetics is a tough conversation to have. Um, Labradors, it's not too bad. Some of the breeds, it's it's real complicated. Uh, so I reached out to um, uh, Paw Print Genetics, which is who I use, and um, uh, I told them what we were doing here, and uh, uh, they were nice enough to to give us uh, our very own uh, promotion code that you can use at checkout for forty percent off on anything they have, any test that they have, and 50% off on coat color genetics testing. You just put it in at checkout when you go to pawprintgenetics.com. Um, you're gonna have to set up an account, it's free, and put your dogs in, that's free too. Uh, you don't spend any money with them until you start ordering tests, and they gave us our very own promo code. It's MLL2021, um, Must Love Labs 2021. That was really nice of them, that's a very generous discount. Uh, and it's ongoing, and I suggest you take them up on it uh, if you're interested in getting DNA testing done on your dogs. They'll do a full panel. Um, I'm not going to try to tell you how to use their website just in this video. I just want to mention this really. Uh, but they're nice folks. You can call them and talk to them, and they'll coach you through the process. They'll do a panel, a recommended panel for the breed that you put in. Uh, or you can pick and choose which tests you want and what you don't want. That That's all up to you. Uh, but they've got a, a, a coat color calculator on their website that I love. Okay, once you know your dog's genetics for the coat color, and, and that's going to be in the system already there, uh, you can put in the genetics for any other dog, like maybe if you were considering a stud from somebody. Um, if, if that person, if that breeder has their dog's coat color genetics, you can put that in the paw print genetics coat color calculator and they'll, they'll give you the probabilities on what the puppies are going to look like. How cool is that? Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so anyways, it's a neat service. I recommend them. Uh, that's who we're currently using is Paw Print Genetics. And uh, I, I love their, their testing structure. And, um, and that, that's who we're going with. And, and they were nice enough to give us, just for our channel and for our subscribers, uh, the promo code. Uh, MLL 2021. You use that at checkout for a real healthy discount. Hope that helps. Well, that wraps up our fifth dog breeding Q&A session here on the channel. We sure do appreciate you stopping into Must Love Labs. Feel free to drop comments in the, in the comments box there if there's uh, anything you'd like to hear us talking about in the future. And thanks for stopping in. We'll see you in the next video.